Zelda clones. The name exists for a reason. But what if a game was a Zelda clone without feeling like a Zelda? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to another video here on Mummified Games. My name is Tony, and today we're going to be talking about the adventure game Anodyne by Melos Han Tani. Anodyne is a game about a person named Young who has been chosen to go on a quest to save the Briar. There's a bunch of sages that follow you around and meet you at temples. Inside those temples are monsters you unlock and puzzles you need to fight. Then, finally making your way through the dungeon and beating up the boss at the end. Getting a fairy that boosts your health up by one, and then also picking up a key that will help you get to another area somewhere on the map. This whole thing is probably reminding you of another game structure of a fairly popular franchise. But the game goes a little bit further than the same cut and paste Zelda clone. From the get go, there's an overtone that maybe these sages aren't actually all that good. There are hints and tips that suggest maybe they aren't to be trusted. And it's that little bit of story right after the first boss that makes me think that there might be more down the line. As with most of these reviews, I played this game for about an hour to get a good handful of footage to show on screen for you to see what the gameplay is like. But what I can't show are the hours I played with it off camera. I downloaded this game once and played it for a few hours, forgot it was installed, came back to it and started a new game and remembered what the game was all about. Ran it for another few hours, maybe around five, starting the one save this game gives you over again and recording the gameplay for the review. Now, in this third time playing the game, I can run through and beat the first boss in less than 20 minutes. Everything after that was just like the second playthrough. Getting out of the first dungeon, you find your way to a gate that you unlock with a key you just picked up. The map is real big, and each time I played the game, I would hug one wall and then eventually get stuck on a puzzle that I couldn't figure out, or in a dungeon that was just a bit too hard. Not that it was a rage quit situation, but just frustrating enough that by the time I made it to a new challenge, I'd been playing for so long that I needed to take a break and not touch the game for another three months as it seems. This time around, I was able to make it to a mountain dungeon where I was given an extension to the broom weapon. Oh, and another thing that takes you away from feeling like a Zelda clone, the weapon that you use isn't a sword or anything like that. You fight monsters with a broom, okay? When you find the broom, the next sage you talk to says something along the lines of, okay, whatever, you're the chosen one, so I guess just get in there and do your thing. It feels like the start of the last retro Zelda video game I reviewed, Lena's Inception how it started you with a broken ruler that couldn't even chop grass. Cool thing about the broom you fight with though is that it can pick up dust and move it to another place. This comes in handy at times. As an example in the first dungeon, the dust blocks shots from the guns on the walls, letting you pass without being hurt. After that dungeon, you can place dust on water and you can ride it like a raft. An interesting thing to put in the game. Speaking of things put in games, here's something that they kept out of the game. There's no money. Another game where you're shown a store or merchant who says that they would love to sell you something, but the main character has no money. It should be said that the game has a nice soundtrack. There were times that Young was just busting it through a field or a forest and was just bobbing along with the music, having a good time, just vibing. And then there were times where I'm working my way through a cave or a dungeon that I found and the music shifted into something weird and offbeat. The music almost forces you to stop slow down and think about the situation that you're in. Soundtrack available on Mellow's Bandcamp through the link in the description. The game has a great teleport system where you jump on one of these pads and you're taken back to the temple somewhere in a space. The portals have gems over the doors and when you collect everything in an area, it starts to glow pink. It's a good thing that helps 100% people quickly look and see if they're missing anything. I spoke about how this game is a Zelda clone, but does it feel like a Zelda clone? Well, that's a good thing because that means that this game can stand on its own without having to be compared to something else. Like anyone who isn't the first child of a family and having to do everything in their power just to stand out against the older sibling. There were times when I was playing and I would scan the walls of a dungeon or forest and anything else that was blocking my way. There's nothing I could have dropped a bomb on and find a cave, finding out what to look for and then using the right tool on it. But sadly, there hasn't been anything like that so far. Part of me wants to find a wall or something that has a secret around it. I haven't played far enough to pick up any other special weapons or tools, 
only a special pair of shoes that let me jump with X. And it was a cool thing that I found just after I passed a cave that you need to find a way to jump over gaps and pits. Haven't found anything like bombs or other weapons that might be a creature's weakness or special way of exposing its weak spot. I think this is a fun game that has a lot of charm in its retro style. Some of the places that you can visit feel darker or more serious than a Zelda game. There was a place with a big worm cave creature and destroying one small worm thing allowed another cave worm thing to pop up in another spot in the sort of general area. It gets weird sometimes. Everything in this game just works and it's about you playing through the game and learning where things are and what they do. It's actually quite fun to play a retro feeling game that reminds you so much of another game I've played but have no idea where everything is. Where you don't know where every cave and every single spot is hidden. It's a new experience and not watered down with hints and glowing signs that point you where to go. There are some puzzles that you're exposed to that are subtle hints that you might be able to solve this later after you get another item. I personally have a strong feeling that there will be a strength item coming sometime in the future. I'm going to be holding on to this game for a while and seeing where it goes. Definitely a game I'm going to keep plugging away with after this review is done. What do you all think? If you've played this game, what were your thoughts on it? If you haven't played this one, are there any other retro adventure games out there that you've played and would want me to try? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. In the meantime, I'm going to go use my electric broom, aka a vacuum, to explore my own dungeon, aka my bedroom office. You all do the YouTube tips. Like, sub, bell, comment your thoughts, and share this video with someone you know. And as always, friends, keep digging. We'll make it out sometime. See you in the next one.